other team was promoted to the uh, Oxy Wildlife Refuge. Uh, and so with that, we'll begin. So what is the Ag Museum? The Ag Museum is a museum of agriculture located in Jackson, Mississippi, which is where I'm from. Um, it's on Lakeland Drive, and specifically 30, uh, or, it's on the end of Lakeland Drive near the Fire Station Museum. Um, it was founded in 1969 by Jim uh, Buck Ross, and it contains exhibits, living history of farms, crossroad towns, and a forest study, and it serves to cultivate and appreciate the history and culture of Mississippi's agriculture. Uh, what the Ag Museum means to us, it's about ed uh, educational opportunities, preserve cultural identity, and to appreciate history. And I'll elaborate on this point in a minute. Now, there's several problems that are uh, met with the agriculture. So first is internet accessibility. And I don't mean like there's problems connecting to Wi-Fi there. I mean that it's hard to like get to their Facebook page. There's three Facebook pages for them. Now, there's understaffed. There's only 13 members there. Uh, there's a small audience. There's the for revenue and the quality of life adjustment. Now the first problem is internet accessibility. Like I just said, there's no problems in connecting to the Wi-Fi, but there's problems finding everything on there. So like I said, there's three Facebook pages. There's one that you can actually get to from the actual website, which is probably the official one. Then there's a fake one or something like that that just happened to get made. And then there's another one that they don't really know anything about. And none of them are really used, uh, which is a problem because you know if you would use them and then upload pictures and everything like that, you could probably bring in more viewers and probably make a little bit more revenue off of that. Now, there's also uh, videos on the uh, website, and they are stereotypical infomercials. And by stereotypical, I mean they all zoom in like this on the person's face. You know, it's, it's kind of creepy, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and then, I know someone, I think Zach mentioned it a couple of days ago when someone else was presenting uh, the Maze Farms, how they should, they had a profile for the donkeys or the zebra donkey. And uh, we thought that was a great idea, so we thought you know, they could make profiles for all their animals. They have a donkey or a mule, they have two pigs, and they have a bunch of other farm animals that they do, and you know, they have ponies, so you, know, you could make profiles for all these, and I'm sure children would love to you know, follow those and see all the pictures of them. Uh, the next problem that they have is that they're other staff. So like I said earlier, they have 13 staff workers there. Uh, they used to have 14, they're missing a curator right now. She left to go work for the Mississippi uh, Art Museum. And, but basically what a curator does is she's the one that manages and makes sure that all these items are here and all these items are here. And it's a really big task because there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of items there. And so they really need to find someone who can organize these all. And not just organize them, but organize them on a computer to make everything you know, more easy to find. You know, our generation is used to you know, having computers for everything. But right now they have everything organized with paper, which is just a complete mess to try to find anything. Now, uh, how they can improve this is they can have a hire section on their website, and then they can also have a volunteer section on their website. So right now they have uh, a volunteer section, but it's kind of blank. There's nowhere to fill in or anything like that, you know, and it's kind of complicated. There needs to be a little bit more personality. And they need to uh, increase, you know, the, the viewers that they bring here. So they're not missing children. They're not missing senior citizens. They're missing our generation. Most of us aren't interested in going out and planting corn or beans or anything like that. We're interested in being on Instagram and Facebook and video games and just hanging out with our friends. Now, you know, how we go about that is what I'll explain in a couple of minutes. But that's mainly what the main problem is with viewers. So we need to uh, bring actors to the talents. And by actors, I mean people who come and pretend to play the role. So one thing is they have a blacksmith forge there. And what would blacksmith do? They would sit there and you know, make weapons and daggers and everything that someone would use to, uh, for agricultural back in the time period that it set it. And they actually do have a partnership with Mississippi Forge Council, uh, but to my knowledge, they've only used it once, uh, which was in like April of 2012. And so basically what I think they should do is just have you know, more meetings, more things like that, because you know, I would love to at least once go slave over a band for at least one time until I realize how awful it was. <laughs> So more, uh, something else they could do was to uh, emphasize their prices. Their tickets are really low. They're only $5. Uh, and I think it's $4 for children, $5 for adults, and then $4 again for senior citizens. But I could be wrong. And so basically what that is, you know, you could spend a $5 bill and go spend the entire day there, you know, learning everything about Mississippi's agricultural history. Now, there needs to be more hands-on activities. And what I mean by that is, so there's pumpkin patch growers, there's Easter egg hunts and things like that, you know, little children can do. But there also needs to be like uh, games on like little boards that you can play. I know uh, the Mississippi Department of the Science 
you said down the road, they have like you know little things you can click on, and just like kind of quiz games you can play, uh, and that's just really entertaining to someone with ADHD. So I can entertain myself about 15 hours. And so they even have things like that. And then again, there's QR codes, which if you don't know what those are, those are those little tiny square boxes that you can take pictures of, and it'll take you to a link. So it's kind of interactive. You can take a picture and then learn about the fact that you have in front of you. Now, if you want to learn about a pitchfork. Uh, now there, there is also planting, which I think is probably the best thing that they could do. You know, it's a win-win scenario. You could probably trick little kids into going planting corn or beans or something, and actually have corn and beans planted for you. You don't actually have to do any work. They'd be enjoying it. They're like, oh my god, well, look, I'm going to be smart. Yeah. It needs more revenue. So basically, what we've discovered is that there is a donate option, but the only way to donate is actually through mail. So you have to go up, write a check put it in an envelope, and then send it to them. Now, a really, really easy fix to this would be a PayPal option. And so all you would have to do is just have a PayPal account, which most adults by now do have, I think. At least my mother does. Uh, and then you can just you know, simply donate to that website. Uh, they need to increase awareness through social media and other outlets. Now, this is probably a problem. Uh, this is probably a thing that's well addressed by most powerful ones here. You know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, MySpace, if you want to go that far. Um, you can go make those accounts and then you know, go like people's pictures, you know, post pictures of your own, people like that, you're increasing awareness of your problems, people are going to be drawn in, you know, that you can post your events are going to be at this time, on this date, and everything like that. Uh, also, they can sell goods that they have in their general store on the site. So basically, not everyone can go to the Agnes Zone every single day. And, you know, especially if it's raining or something or nasty outside or if it's cold or something like that. So this way, you know, if they wanted a t-shirt, if they wanted an old coat bottle or something for their, for their children for some special event or something like that, you know, you can just order it and they can ship it to the house. Uh, and also, something that we thought they might be able to uh, create a farmer's market with their unused land. So, like I said, I live in Jackson. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the nearest farmer's market is, but I know it's, there's not one immediately around the farmers in the Agnes Hill. And I think the nearest one is on the county line, maybe. And if not that, in the Renaissance, which is about seven or eight miles away. Uh, so with that, you know, maybe they could use their about 40 acres of unused land. They do have a nature walk back there, so it's just kind of up to them. There's also other things they, they could do, but it's just kind of focusing on the agricultural part. So we thought a farmer's market would be the best idea. Quality of life adjustments. So this is a problem to me because, like I said, I've been to the Aggie Zone. It's a history museum. It can get kind of boring, especially with the lighting. It's so just dark and everything that you can almost fall asleep standing up. It is incredibly just, you know, kind of solid. And basically what they can do with that is just add LEDs. Now another thing that they have a problem with is signs. If you don't know how to get to the Ag Museum, you're not going to get to the Ag Museum. It's that complicated. You have to park in a parking lot, then walk across after one or two catwalks to actually get to the museum. Now you will have no idea how to find those catwalks or even go towards the Ag Museum if you've never been there before. And let me just tell you a little bit about, about my experience. So I've lived in Jackson all my life, and I've been to the Ag Museum several times. I know they have a giant rocking chair, which has become a fan among uh, my friends, you know. So everyone likes to go take pictures with that, so the giant rocking chair. My giant, I do mean giant, you know, it, it's about this tall, and it is gigantic, you know, and it's just become something like that. I know they have thousands upon thousands of artifacts, and you can walk through the exhibits and read everything about it. Uh, they also have like Easter egg hunts and everything like that. And one thing I always notice every year is they always have hundreds upon hundreds of pumpkins growing outside of their little garden area every time around October and everything like that because they have a uh, pumpkin lunch. And basically, it's just anything and everything to do with agriculture. And no, that's not picture me. 